One of the big questions I always get asked when people are buying a new putter is should I buy a mallet or a blade? Let's do it. And let's do it now. Hi everyone, my name's James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. In today's video, Chris, we have an absolute dream for people, don't we? A humdinger. A humdinger. So, what? go on then. Go on then. Never. Oh, oh. so when people are buying a new putter, Chris, yep. the big thing they often ask is, do I go a nice Scotty Cameron blade like that and hold putts? No. Good pace. Or do I go for something a little bit bigger, in brackets, a little bit more forgiving, with more MOI? So, Chris, you're a putting expert, a short game expert and a tour coach. Well, you better believe it. So what should people do? So again, when it comes down to fitting, I get the question a lot. I get a lot of people ring up, I need a new putter because I'm missing putts to the right, I'm missing putts to the left. And they've all got a general idea of, okay, I'm a high handicapper, or even, even if they're a single figure handicapper, they think I need to go more forgiving, I need to go a mallet. But it's about getting some numbers, starting to see which one is actually going to help you. You know, here we've got two putters, we've got the Scotty Cameron Newport with a reasonable amount of toe hang that people often talk about. And then we've got a, the classic number seven, Odyssey, uh, Stroke Lab. Very face balanced, that one. Pretty face balanced, might have a, a tiny bit, or is it pretty much? I'd say it's got a tiny bit of toe hang, but not a lot at all. So a lot of people start to talk toe hang, right, you know, if I'm hitting putts left, I need to go to this putter. It's because I've got a toe hang putter and that's closing and going left, which is very much of a myth, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then what they do is they go, OK, I want to go straight back, straight through, because I've also heard that over the years, and that's going to give me a face balance putter. But I have a face balance putter, for example, in the Rossi. Well, I haven't used it for, I've been using a toe hang, so that's a lie, but I, I normally use the Rossi which is face bound, and I have a very big arc, but mm -hmm. I managed to get that to roll really well, end over end, which again, the putter has to fit to the technique you're doing. So you could get, a, you, could get you know, a, a mallet putter, and you, and, but you've got a massive arc, and then it might not suit your stroke. You might be straight back and straight through, so it could. Is there such thing as straight back and straight through? No, again, straight back and straight through is going to be on an arc. A putter has to have an arc because of the lie angle. So even if I go, I feel like it's gone straight back, that's still going to slightly arc on the way through. The only way to get a straight back, straight through would be to have a broom handle putter, and that would be able to work straight back, straight through. But nowadays you don't see that much, and with a lie angle, we're going to have some kind of arc. So it's understanding that there's always going to be arc in your stroke, we just need to see some numbers and see what your face control is doing. Okay, and before we delve even deeper into that, there are a few things that you need to think about when buying a putter, not just should I buy a face balance putter, not just should I buy a mallet, and not just should I buy a Scotty Cameron blade. Other blades are available, but... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I... Uh... Nobody ever asked for any other blade other than a Scotty Cameron. Or a Cameron. ping, maybe. Oh yeah, ping, but the old ones, yeah. Because not... ping started with the answer, didn't they? Correct, they did, but... Yeah, so when you're looking into a fitting, one other thing you want to look at is depending on how tall you are. So if you're, I'm six foot, we all know James is five foot three. So length of putters will be slightly different. So if I was, you know, this is a uh, 34 inch James, that's right. 35, I think. We'll go with it's 35, okay. <laughs> that one, that one is 35. So just against that. We'll actually test. It's 34, sorry. 34 and a half. Yeah, randomly, it's in between those two. <laughs> so we've got a 34 and a half inch putter. So you have to go and get measured for the height you are and the posture you take. So when it comes in there, how do your, what we base it on a lot of the times is where do your eyes sit? So are your eyes outside of the ball? Which for again, the majority of people, 95 plus percent, I would say that doesn't lead to good putting. If your eyes are outside of the putter when you bend over, the putter's not the There's right an exception size. to every rule, but usually... Usually, yeah, like I say, there's a there's a 5% I'm going to go with, okay? But if I can take my posture, I'm up using the full amount of the grip, and if I was to drop a ball from my left eye, it should be just inside. So there, I'm using the grip, I've took a normal posture, and this putter there is a good length for me. 
So at six foot, 34 and a half inches. Six foot. Give or take. It's a little bit short, maybe my hand is off, so I might go 35, my putters are 35, but that test there is going to see if that's correct. If somebody, if we've got a 32 inch putter and I did the same test, I would start to see that my eye line is outside. Then I'd be starting to worry, so the length wouldn't be right. After that, we've got different shaft makeups now, obviously with the Stroke Lab, the Odyssey design, the Phil Kenyon design. It's designed there to put more weight into the head, that would be the head, and <laughs> the butt of the club, to let that putter swing a little bit more. But again, this is dependent on what kind of stroke. If you've got a very much a, a pop stroke, a very quick stroke, what I start to see is a lot of people get some lag and they start to maybe fat. Hopefully they don't take a divot like you almost did there. Yeah, tap it down. <laughs> so you might go steel shaft, you might go for the original the Sky Cameron steel shaft, Weight is slightly different for people there who have a quicker stroke. That's my game at the moment, it's red hot, so be careful. It's red hot. Red hot. That might work for you. So again, think about what kind of shaft you want. And then it comes down to head design. Something silly it does depend on how it suits your eye. So what looks good down on the ball. Alignment's a huge factor in this, isn't it? Is it easier to align than maybe a standard blade putter? That's it, there's all sorts of different, some people have no markings, some will have two lines, some will have a long line, some will have a short line, some will have a dot. There's multiple different things. But something that suits you, something will aim you better, and again, when you go for a fitting, you should be tested on where you are aiming the putter to see which one suits you. And then from there, the head that suits you the best. Weight, again, is very much down to feel. So uh, you can see that both of these have weights in there that can do different things. We can make it heavier, we can make it lighter, all based on how you want a putter to feel in your hand. And at the end of the day, it's got to get results. So we've got to think about what is gonna give you the best results. The final, th final thing, although it seems like I've mentioned a lot of things, is different faces so here we can see there's a very soft insert the original white hot face is one that Callaway have brought back in or Odyssey and again the milled face on the Scotty Cameron is soft but we know some ranges such as the Ping Heplers for example very firm face so they might be for people again with different strokes so when it comes to putter fittings there is a lot to go through it you know it is a lot more in depth than just going the old classic Brian walks into the shop and goes well, that feels all right. I yeah, love that. Roll yeah. a few in the mat that's designed to go in anyway, so you feel better about yourself. Also, the state of the greens that you're playing can make a big difference. So, say if you play generally slower greens or quicker greens, then the weighting in the putter might be different, for example. Yeah, exactly. So, if you are play on very slow greens, you that's might rapid want... down there. You might want something a little bit heavier, so it comes off a little bit faster. You don't have to make as much stroke. If you're on light greens, you might go something lighter but again that's personal preference you might be the opposite of way round and that's where getting out onto the green that you actually play on is good because i know when people go for fittings it can just be indoors and you might be on something that's like a billiards table billiards billiards not not pool i don't know why i went with billiards to be honest but you might be on something very quick a 12 on the stimp that's all well and good that's what dreams are made of until you get onto your golf course and it's six on the stimp and you're getting the ball nowhere near the hole. And Chris, we told people to stay right to the end of this video to show them that it's not just about the head shape, it's more about... Go on. Ah, oh. oh, I can't believe we didn't get that. It's right. not just about the head shape, it's more about the toe hang, and you're gonna dispel a little myth here for us with the toe hang. Yeah, so I get a lot of people who come for fittings and they say I'm missing putts left uh, because I've got a toe hang putter. So they have a Scotty camera and they have a blade or even a mallet that's got, you know, some kind of toe hang and they say, right, it's because I've got toe hang. I've got to now get a putter that doesn't close as much. But if we actually watch the forces that we put on a putting stroke, as this putter moves back, if I take that away, look what happens to the club face. It actually closes on the way back and on the way through, I can do it nicely here, it actually opens. So actually, if you're struggling missing putts left and you've got a face balanced putter, the toe hang one, although people would say no chance, that might be a better putter for you because actually in transition, 
the putter is designed to open, so it'll have a more open face than a face balance putter. Almost like a Tiger Woods 2000 S stroke, where there's a, quite a bit of rotation in there, opening and closing, yeah, like so a door. Correct, there's going to be some rotation on that club face, but it's actually keeping it open for longer as a comparison to a face balance. So that's one of the myths. Everybody comes to me, oh, I'm missing loads of putts left because I've got a toe hang. Toe hang means it's closing over. No, it might just be your technique. If anything, a, a, a toe hang putter might actually help you get that starting on. And how many more. times, sorry to keep you, Chris, but how many times, this is an absolute nugget as well, when people come for a putter fitting, like Nick, who's just teared off down there, end up with just having a putter less and, and become leave better putters. Yeah, a lot of the times I push people down that route because if anything you should be able to put with any putter. If you've got a sound technique, if you've got a good posture, a consistent ball position, you whether it's a toe hang, lifted the wrong one up, if it's a toe hang or a face balance putter, you should be able to get any kind of putter rolling if you've got a consistent stroke. Very so. much like a driver. If you if you're a good driver of the ball you'll hit an okay drive with everything, it's just getting those milliseconds out of it, it's getting those tiny little bits of performance out of it. And that's the thing, it comes down to when they think about lessons, people go, well, well I don't need lessons, I just need a new putter because I know I need to get a, I need to get a face balance putter. I mean, that's going to cost you £300, a lesson is going to be a lot less, and if you can take away from what you get in a lesson, to be able to put that into practice maybe for half an hour, that's going to save you probably closer yeah. to 200 And if you want an online lesson, pounds. Chris, where do you get them? Online lesson. Skillist? Skillist. And just download the app and search Chris Dennis. There we go. Chris, thank you ever so much for your time. No problem. So guys, there we go. I really hope you have enjoyed that and I hope you found it helpful if you are in the market for a new putter. So often, and I've been guilty of this myself, you'll go into the shop, you'll think, do I buy a face balance? Do I buy a mallet? Do I buy a blade? Do I buy a Scotty? Do I buy an Odyssey? Hopefully that's helped. Guys, if you enjoyed it, smash that subscribe button. Go and check out Chris on the Skillist app if you are after some online lessons. And apart from that, uh, oh, nearly. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs>